I'd like to call to order the meeting of the West Bend Community Memorial Library Board for Tuesday, March 20, 21st. Our first item on the agenda is a Pledge of Allegiance. So if you could stand to say the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, did you, should we do the consent agenda and then do you want to do introductions or? Sure, am I introducing? I can introduce. You've you got everybody's name. <laughs> I do. Um, um, well, let's do the consent we'll agenda. We'll do the consent agenda. These are our speakers. Okay, um, I'd like to ask for a consent agenda to approve the board meeting minutes from our February meeting and also the library expenditures from the, for February 2023. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we, we have a motion by Brett and a second by Jay. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, all right, I think one more thing. I think we'll do the finances and then okay. we'll introduce. Sounds good. Now we, we do have two guests. We can introduce them at the I'll same time. I'll introduce them to it. Well, whatever you want me to do, just let me know. It's easy peasy, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll look at the uh, financial reports. Um, now we, we have the audit going on. Have we heard back on the audit? The Not yet, I was meaning to talk to Carrie, okay. Today, but so know. next month we probably will be. We'll have a report next month for sure. Okay. Right. Joseph did provide us with the January and the Febru February um, dollar amounts or the monies. Does anyone have any questions? Before we do, if you do have questions, I would like to go over the two um, the donations that we received from individuals wow in january guys we got forty dollars interest i don't think i've ever it's, in, been, a it's been a long time so we got forty dollars and thirty cents interest <clears throat> we had a donation of three hundred dollars for a memorial for kenneth porter and a two hundred and fifty dollar donation for jane from james and amy pets, Por pets? okay for the children or the family program and the kids crafts. So I'd like to thank um, the donors who, who donated to the Kenneth Porter Memorial and also to the Ports family for their donation in January. And did we have any in, no, February. February we didn't get any donations. Gotta get out there and pound that pavement. We're working on it. <laughs> Um, any questions about the finances? I see all of the money from the city has been deposited. Yes. Um, does that, that doesn't include the county. Did we get our first payment? We got our first payment from the county. Is it in here? Yeah, I think it would be then. Because um, yeah, the city is eight. Is yeah. And our carryover, well, eight. Yeah. yeah, the carryover from December one, which we'll have the true up after the audit, was around two hundred grand. Yeah. So our first payment from the county is in there, it's and in also there, yeah. the city. Um, okay. Full amount for the city is there. Yeah. Well, no questions. All right. Um, then I would like to. Um, you want to introduce just Tom sure. and Ian? Uh, Tom is our vice president of the Friends of the Library. Um, so part of the, uh, I think it's part of the bylaws that says that they should have somebody here. That's correct. So he's, he's filling that role until they change the bylaws, I guess. <laughs> or he might stay with us forever because it's so much fun. <laughs> um, Ian is working with us with a um, uh, program through a school. He did a, sat in with us a while ago, if you might remember him, um, and just to, to sit in for a meeting. And now he's, he's here regularly on Tuesdays and Fridays, and hopefully we're going to find a, 
a home for him for a while Good. Um, at Welcome. some point. So. Welcome. Welcome back. We must have impressed you at our the board meeting you saw. I should very clarify, he's not homeless. I mean like no, a, work, a work home. <laughs> not a <laughs> so Okay. All right. And now um, our agenda item is a presentation from the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. I would like to introduce you to the, uh, three of the people who have come to address us. We have Will, we have Emmanuel, and we have Trinlin. And they will be giving us an overview on the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. So please give them your undivided attention. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'll move a little closer to the mic. Thanks so much for having us and uh, appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm Will Janish, um, and I'm joined by my colleagues today, um, Emmanuel and Tren Lan. Um, I ask them to join me, um, not only for tech technical expertise of what we're talking about today, but all three of us are working on a regular basis up in West Bend, so it's good to have a, for you to see a familiar face um, and people that are representing the foundation if you potentially um, invest with us. So. Um, a little bit of background on the West Bend Community Foundation and the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. We, we are, all three of us are employees of the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. We're the parent company of the West Bend uh, Community Foundation. Um, West Bend Foundation represents um, the city of West Bend and surrounding communities. They really are the Washington County arm of the, of the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. Um, the GMF, we are the paid staff. Um, we are headquartered down in Milwaukee, down along the river, just north of Fiserv. A um, little bit of background on GMF, we're 100 and 107 years old this year, so second oldest community foundation in the country. Um, we have assets north of a billion dollars. Um, about 1,500 funds, and that includes about 180 nonprofit funds, so libraries, nonprofits. Um, Trent Lawn will talk a little bit more about the nonprofits specific to West, um, to West Bend that have joined the, the efforts. Um, so we are staff, um, but we represent, and we are really the, the boots on the ground in the West Bend area. So I have served as the um, senior advisor, the relationship manager for over 10 years. Um, I get to work with the board of the West Bend Foundation. So that's an independent 501c3 charity themselves. Um, they have affiliated with the Greater Milwaukee Foundation for investment expertise, financing, you know, grant making, program staff. Every, everything that a foundation would do, but, but need a paid staff to do it. So the West Bend Foundation retains autonomy over their grant programs, where their dollars are going, um, their bylaws, and all the things that you do for the West Bend Library is similar. Um, and so um, uh, that board is currently headed up by James Danaher, who's the president. He's an attorney over at Schlamer Law, as some of you may know him. Past presidents include Peter Ziegler, uh, Bill Gale, Sharon Ziegler, um, uh, good community members such as those. Um, West Bend Foundation is 24 years old, so they're about a quarter lifespan of the Milwaukee Foundation. That was started by Sharon and Doug Ziegler and Cliff and Betty Nelson back in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, really as a way to give back to the community of, of West Bend. So um, the foundation is really um, split into kind of two parts, which I can talk about briefly before I hand it over to Trenelon. One is the discretionary grant making that's done. So those are board controlled dollars and those dollars are staying specific to West Bend. So they're going to all the local nonprofits, the threshold and the free clinic and the school system and the baseball fields and the library and all the, all the great things that makes West Bend unique. Um, and then there's the donors um, who can direct their grants um, anywhere they wish around the country. Those are really through donor advised funds. So they can make the grants, um, you know, to their alma mater, non uh, nonprofits here, nonprofits out of state. Um, the largest of those donors to the West Bend um, Foundation is, is uh, the Corporate Foundation of West Bend Mutual. So they have, hold significant amount of assets, and they um, spread those dollars liberally throughout um, West Bend, Washington County. I'm sure you're all well aware of the impact of West Bend Mutual. So we are very grateful to have um, great partners like West Bend Mutual um, with us. So um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Trenlon. Um, she is going to talk just a little bit about the different nonprofits. Um, of course, we're available to take any questions about the foundation itself. After Shenmon, it'll go to Emmanuel, and he'll talk more in technical detail about why we're here today, which is really to talk about the agency endowment fund. So, 
So, um, hi. So, um, as of today, West Bend Community Foundation has 60 funds um, that are made up of those individuals, families, endowments, foundations, and agency endowments. Um, prior to the market crash, they were at um, roughly 80 million in assets. As of today, they're at the 70 million asset mark. Um, they have a really good history with the nonprofits in the area. Over the past two years, um, four nonprofits have joined the Community Foundation, which include Friends of Lock Lorraine Conservancy, Washington County Golf Courses, Parks and Trails Endowment, Cedar Lakes Conservation Fund, and Washington County Campus Foundation Fund. So before we move into agency and down specific questions, do you have any questions for about the foundation, what's the community foundation, do you have that? We'll have more as we go along probably. Great. Great. Right. 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 Yeah. If nobody else has questions, yeah. I'll, I'll start on my list. Okay. Sure. All right. yeah, we welcome at any time, so anybody just jump in. Yeah, it's great. And and I will move into some of the uh, more nitty-gritty details. Uh, as, uh, as mentioned earlier, I'm Emmanuel Rios. I'm a philanthropic advisor with the Great Milwaukee Foundation. Um, I mainly focus on agency endowments. So as Will mentioned, we've got over 180 nonprofit partners that have endowment funds at the GMF. Um, they range from um, $100,000 to, to several million dollars, frankly. Um, and it's been you know, really great uh, working with all these organizations. I joined in May of 2022, um, and you know it became in, you know, that's so evident, the value of an endowment fund, um, especially in the last couple of years. If you've seen, you know, countless nonprofit organizations deal with a pandemic, rising costs, um, donations that have fluctuated from year to year. Um, and I think just having that kind of safety net and backbone of support that an endowment fund can provide as an organization grows um, over time as well. Um, it's just, you know, that, that value has really been shown in the last few years. Um, so, uh, to kind of give you the basics of our agency endowment fund, um, you know, that is dollars that are invested with the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. Um, it is then invested with a very long-term uh, philosophy so that those dollars grow with the organization um, so that as you're receiving money, um, you know, from the fund, it's still continuing to keep that principle intact. Uh, our current fund minimum is $100,000. Um, I know you had met in 2013 and I think that may have changed from then. but. Um, uh, it has an admin fee of, of 1%. Uh, that admin fee does go down as the fund grows. So when it's over a million dollars, it goes down to 0.8% uh, for everything between 1 million and 2, um, then goes down to 0.6 um, and then 0.2. Um, with that, um, you know, that dollar, that money is then invested. Um, our investment philosophy, um, which I do include in your packets um, on the right, is kind of a document that goes in more detail. Um, but, you know, when you're working with nonprofits and with really all of our funds, um, our investment philosophy is, is very long-term focused. So it is about ensuring that that principle, again, is intact in the long run. When we're talking endowment funds, I always tell folks, you know, you're not talking about, frankly, even your lifetime. You're thinking about what the organization is going to look like in, you know, 20, 50, 100 years from now. Um, so, you know, it is a, it is a very risk-averse uh, investment philosophy that focuses on kind of maintaining long-term gains that, that keep that principal balance growing. Um, with that, we do have four investment pools that are an option. Um, so our primary one is the GMF pool. That is um, the one that we have the most control over. So we have an investment committee that manages that throughout the year um, and then contracts out to crucial partners to actually make those investment decisions for us. Um, but we also have investment pools with with BMO, uh, with US Bank, um, and JP Morgan. Uh, those all have the same general investment philosophy, so you're not gonna be getting a different approach. It's just gonna be the certain asset class mixture is gonna be a little different. Now, the nice thing for really all nonprofits is these are investment pools that, you know, it's, it's a pool of money. So, as Will mentioned, you know, we had over a billion dollars invested in total, so you're gonna have access to some investment opportunities that, you know, funds of smaller sizes just aren't gonna have. Um, the nice thing with that, um, barring the last year, I'll just kind of, you know, I'll fit in the room, um, is I think it really, I think, just provides a little bit more um, safeguards for organizations as you're looking at the long-term performance. Um, you know, with that, though, the nice thing with our endowment funds is we can really structure them to kind of the needs of the library. Um, so we actually partner with, uh, I believe, 10 other libraries in the community, and I'll be frank, their funds are all completely different kind of for what their immediate needs are. 
Um, when I say we can kind of work on that, uh, so when we create any endowment fund, we create a gift agreement with that organization that really outlines what that purpose of the fund is going to be. So we have some organizations that want to have a very specific purpose for this fund, if it's to provide support for specific programming, for building improvements. Uh, we also have a number of organizations that just choose to keep it for general operating support. Um, I usually say if you're unsure that general operating support is nice because it kind of leaves things uh, you know, open for future developments. Um, the nice thing with that is our role, in addition to being stewards of these investments, is to make sure that, we're follow that you're following the terms of those agreements as well. So it's kind of a safeguard for future organizations when you're thinking, you know, what is the board going to do with this money, you know, again, in 20, 30 years. Um, in addition to kind of focusing on that purpose, uh, you know, we can decide how you want to handle access to principal. So I mentioned that, you know, our minimum is $100,000. Um, access to principal is something that was uh, very important the last few years. Again, as I mentioned, you know, a pandemic hit, organizations were, you know, in a rut and they didn't necessarily know where funding was going to come from. Um, building in kind of that safeguard is nice um, so that, you know, in a time of need, while this isn't necessarily the purpose of an endowment fund, it's still an asset that you have access to. Um, and we would work with you to kind of draft what those requirements are for principal access. So many organizations will choose some kind of a board vote. Um, it might be unanimous, it might require a majority, um, but it's really just, again, a good safeguard to make sure that, you know, we're stewarding the dollars and you're stewarding the dollars as well. Um, and then how that kind of those endowment funds work then is we have currently a 4.75% spending policy. So of that total investment, 4.75% is essentially spun off every year to support your organization. Some organizations choose not to receive those distributions if they don't need that money right away. They just kind of reinvest that so that the funds continue to grow. Um, kind of our standard approach is to do that in quarterly payouts, so that money is just wired directly to, to the library every quarter. Um, but we can also, again, be flexible. We work with some that choose to do it on request, so that is kind of, you know, that money kind of continues to grow. That 4.75 is set aside during the year, and then as you need it, you're able to reach out to us. Um, or again, you could keep it on reinvest. So the nice thing is it, it's kind of flexible with how you access it. Um, I do always say, you know, it's not, with, with these, because this money is invested, it's not necessarily like a, a checking account, so it's not something that you can necessarily access right away. But, you know, typically if we receive a distribution request, that money is out within the following week. Um, so it is, it's still pretty timely. Um, but, you know, these are great. Uh, first of all, I just want to give you all um, kind of kudos for starting the conversation, whether or not you open a fund with us. I think this is just a great backbone for all organizations as you're looking to just diversify your revenue streams. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just, again, it's a great way, I think, to ensure that kind of that support remains consistent as well. Um, one thing I actually failed to touch on is with that spending policy of 4.75 percent, um, that's actually calculated on the last 20, uh, 20 quarters of market performance. Uh, the nice thing with that is when you have a year like this past year when the market just, you know, kind of falls off a cliff. Uh, what that organization gets every quarter is still going to remain fairly consistent. So, you know, if the market is down 15%, you're not going to be receiving 15% lower. Um, for the most part, it's going to kind of stay in that general range. Um, but then over time, you know, that money is going to grow and grow and grow so that those distributions, again, assuming the market chooses to be a little more cooperative, uh, those distributions will grow as well. Um, you know, as I mentioned, so we have uh, funds, I can just name a couple of the libraries that we partner with if it's helpful. So we actually, uh, we have endowment funds with the Cedarburg Public Library, the Milwaukee Public Library Foundation, the Shorewood Public Library, uh, the W.J. Niedercorn Library, which is in Port Washington, uh, the Oak Creek Public Library, Whitefish Bay Public Library, West Dallas Public Library, Muskego, Hales Corners, and the uh, uh, Cudahy Family Library. So it's really something that, um, A, I think we're well-versed in working with organizations as yourself, as well as organizations that have a partnership with kind of city governments. Um, we, we partner with another number of other organizations that are kind of related to city, to the city organizations as well. Um, but, you know, that's kind of the gist of the GMF and our endowment funds. Um, I did include some additional information on there, again, on kind of just an overview similar to stuff I provided here, more details on our investment philosophy. Um, and then kind of some more specifics on our schedule of fees. But um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you all have. Okay. You said the access to principal. Mm -hmm. That's above the $100,000. So you... Um, we would have $120,000 yeah, yeah. we can access. We had an emergency to meet 
that yeah. Yeah. they can't go below. You could always close the fund. So what we would typically say is if you were going to go below that minimum, we'd usually request that you liquidate the whole right. fund. Yes. Um, but yeah, yeah, you certainly um, could access it up to that. Um, and just kind of with that in mind, um, when we're looking at that fund minimum, we don't take into account market performance. So let's say you happen to put in $100,000 and the market goes down 5% the following day. We're not going to force like a fund liquidation or anything like that. Um, it, that would certainly, you know, we would. Yeah, that's that just that's would good because be there might be some roller coaster rides ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, so. In the past, I think they talked about having to staff a board to oversee the fund, but your board oversees the, the fund, from what I understand, so we wouldn't have to recruit volunteers to, to be part of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one of the nice things, um, so we work again with organizations that um, have a ton of paid staff. We work with some nonprofits that are entirely volunteer-led. Um, the nice thing is we kind of take a lot of that work off of their plates. Um, so, you know, as far as those distributions, that's all kind of handled automatically. Um, you know, if you, uh, I'm kind of, I would be in this case, you know, either be myself or Will probably who would be kind of your point of contact as well. So, you know, if you had any questions on how the fund operates, um, we're always available to come present to the board like this. Um, we actually provide quarterly investor briefings that everyone is invited to as well. Those are led by uh, Mike Miller, who um, heads up our investment portfolio for the GMF pool. Um, but um, it really just takes a lot of that pressure, I think, off of organizations. Um, we have a great planned giving team as well, so um, just kind of an added resource where if you have donors who are interested in supporting, um, you know, the library in general or this fund specifically, but, you know, you're not really sure how to answer their questions because maybe they want to donate stock or, you know, they, they have a house they want to donate and you don't even know where to begin with that. Well, that um, leads into my next question, you know. How, yeah. how, how do we have to... Can we can people donate stock or a house yeah. to the fund, and do you handle that, or do we have to? Yeah. Um, so typically, um, we can help with it. Is how I would say it. So legally, all of the contributions from the fund would have to originate from the organization. So okay. if a donor wanted to support your endowment fund specifically, they would make a donation to the library, and the library would then send it to us. Um, and this is ma mainly uh, like an IRS regulation. Um, it allows you to maintain kind of that access to principal as well because uh, that donor intent is, um, is kind of captured on your end. Um, but we serve as, when I say kind of like a middleman in that, so let's say they had a complicated asset that you just don't have the capacity to process. Right, we would I don't. Yeah, yes, exactly, yeah. We would work with an organization where um, we could draft a gift agreement where, you know, they would donate it to us. We would essentially, it's, a little bit of a workaround, but we would in turn send it back to you to then, of course, be sent back to us. Um, most of this, again, is kind of to stay in, in, in conformity with IRS regulations. Um, sure. But um, yeah, we're always happy to partner on that. Um, if they went to receive a stock gift, we could make a recommendation. Um, yes. We have a Baird account where we, um, we've set up for donors to make stock gifts at the foundation. So we can make that recommendation as well um, so that you can route that through the Baird um, account. That would be something that the library would have to set up, but my understanding is that it's fairly simple yeah. to do. Okay. Um, so. yeah. Did I spur any other thoughts? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask a question just out of curiosity, and you might not even know this. Prior to this last year, what was the... Um, Average rate of return. Yeah, um, so great question. that's a great question. Um, actually, I'm going to pull up the document to get the most accurate information. Um, in your folders on the right side is this investment philosophy. It's going to include um, on the second page then um, the investment performance returns of all of our pools. And I can send a much more detailed report if anyone's interested. Um, so last year was not great, which is probably no surprise to anyone. Um, but you know, as you look at kind of our three, five, seven year, um, and ten year, you know, the GMF pool, for example, had a seven uh, seven percent return over ten years. Um, all of these are going to be kind of net of all of our investment fees as well. Um, so that that result you're seeing, that is kind of you know what uh, what the organization can respect or can expect. Um, but uh, you know, looking again at that kind of ten year performance, then so the GMF pool was seven percent, the U.S. Bank Trust pool was six point four. The BMO Harris was 6.7, and then the JP Morgan uh, trust pool was 7.1. Um, really, you know, donors have access to any one of those pools. We're kind of agnostic as far as what that is. Um, the vast majority of our money is invested in the GMF pool. Um, I think some folks just prefer the fact that we have a little bit more control over that. That, that portfolio is a little bit more diversified as far as asset managers. 
Um, and then the U.S. Bank, J.P. Morgan, and BMO, you know, those are all going to be kind of invested in their own products. Um, so I think um, when you look at interest diversification, um, there are some advantages to the GMF pool. But, um, you know, we really, um, I always tell folks, you know, uh, kind of do your own due diligence with the investment uh, side of things when you're looking at what pool is because um, not my, not my forte, more than anything. Yeah, and I, I, I could add to this is that uh, I just recently read in a chronicle of philanthropy that the average private foundation lost a, a, even 20% in their portfolio last year. So um, all four of those pools beat the um, yeah. unfortunate <laughs> reality for most private foundations. And that's, um, you know, I mean, frankly, well, as terrible as this past year was for investments, I think that really drives home the importance of that 4.75% spending policy as well. So that's really meant, again, to make sure that these funds aren't going to be depleted in bad, going to be depleted in bad years. Um, that can also mean, you know, when we have years, this isn't represented here, but, you know, there have been years where the mark where the pool performance was 15% positive, 25% positive. You're still going to be receiving that 4.75% because that's going to allow this fund to, to be able to weather times like now. Um, when you're looking at endowment funds, again, it, it is really, it's hard, I think, coming from an individual side where I always look at kind of like my personal retirement fund and I see the hit it took in the past year and I get a little panicky. Um, I'm young enough where I can recover, but when you talk in organizations, I think you're always going to be thinking like there will be time to recover because these organizations are going to be around um, ideally well beyond our time here. Um, yeah. um, I did have another question. So the donor makes a gift to the library, which does have a government tax exemption, yes, yep. and that would be the, the for their IRS records, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We do have precedent for this, um, even here within West Bend. The county has set up two funds within the last two years that I've worked on specifically. One is to support the golf course, parks and trails, and the other one is to support the arm, of the, the veterans um, arm of the county and so they, they made those donations directly from government funds to the foundation so there's sure. precedent for that. Okay. Um, one point of clarity to, um, to avoid confusion, um, as a board you can, if you were to, to uh, move forward with opening a fund, you can choose it at the West Bend Foundation or the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. It's really a distinction without a lot of difference, I mean you're still getting the same staffing you're still getting the same fee schedule, you're still getting the same service statements. If you choose West Bend, you really become part of that family of funds. So everything that comes is kind of underneath that idea of the West Bend Community Foundation. In addition, you also get an invitation to their annual event in the fall. Last year we held it at the Bend, and that's for donors and supporters to come together and network a little bit. Um, no asks for money, there's, there's nothing like that. It's really just to meet other donors um, and, and staff of the or you know staff of the foundation. So it's a nice way to stay vocal and ensure that your dollars stay vocal. And donors like that. They like to know that the dollars stay, even though technically yes, they're you know our finance and things are happening in downtown Milwaukee that they're really held and being managed by the board of the West Bend uh, Community Foundation. So. And if I could ask a couple of questions of you all, actually, and it's okay if you don't know the, the answer, um, but. Yeah. Did you have a kind of a purpose in mind for this fund? Were you thinking general operating? Was there a, a project you were? Uh, general operating is okay. is good for us, and if we come up with a project, <laughs> with the project because well, four point seven five or whatever mm -hmm. is is less than five thousand dollars for the first year anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, right. I I think if we don't have a plan for it, it we just reinvest that and, yeah, and so. build that fund. Um, but if something comes up that we need funds for us, so if we're going to do a renovation, uh, let's say we're going to, hypothetically, but we've been thinking about it for a long time, do a renovation upstairs for a children's department, we might need funds for that, and then at that point we would look at that yeah. potentially in, in five, ten years or whatever, yeah, and see where things are at. One of the things, too, is um, because we are part of a government agency, we're a little different than other departments, but I know specifically some of the big donors that you talk about. They do not want to give money to the library because the city then will say it's part of, uh, oh, well, you give me 100000 the city will say, I don't have to support you. Uh, Whereas uh, if yeah. we have an endowment, it's a totally different entity that is separate 
from what's the city. It does create the, the firm boundaries, I guess, yeah, is what you're yeah, saying. We, so we, that we, yeah. um, actually have a number of funds with the city of Milwaukee that were kind of actually created for that specific reason. Yeah. Um, there were donors who were kind of, uh, for better or worse, uncomfortable with money kind of being, I don't, I don't want to say misuse, but you know, used for other purposes. It's than really the not it's misused. You're right. But what they're saying is, is yeah, I guess you, I won't say misused. Yeah. I mean, you can no, use but, it. To, but, so, if the yeah. city sees that we would get money, yeah. they may they may say, "Well, you got a hundred thousand dollars. We can decrease the levy mm -hmm. yeah. that we give you." And meanwhile, we're looking at that hundred thousand dollars in this case going into a foundation mm -hmm. that we won't have access to right away yeah. Yeah. unless we really have a good need for it. Yeah. And, and yeah. This protects but one us. of the things, though, is if we do have donors eventually. And if we set up a foundation, because that had been one of the goals we had talked about eventually having a foundation, that money then, it is, a, is money that you have access to, but it's controlled under a, a foundation. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Okay. So, and that was a question I had, was it Bob or with the friends? You are not a fundraising organization as much as an advisory board? Is well, they, they well, they do fundraising, fundraising as well. Oh, they do fundraising. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. We're good. So. Okay. They've been doing pretty well. Yeah. So for three years, we I don't remember. I told him he can't talk because he's not on the agenda. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry but he, probably 13,000 in three book sales okay. is what they've done oh, so wonderful. far, and okay. maybe a little bit more than that. And they're just, uh, I, I, they're a relatively new friends. Okay. They're about three years, right? Oh, well, just, yeah. just uh, going to the right? Yeah. Oh. Congratulations. They're, they're doing well. Yeah. So. Wonderful. Um, yeah, and, and the other thing is we don't have a way to invest our money. Other, we get interest on some funds that we have in accounts that the city holds, mm -hmm. but um, that's not a way for the community to support us in the long term yeah, that absolutely. we're looking for. And actually some of the funds that we have, which would be the potential for investment, were funds that were donated to us with a very specific purpose. Mm -hmm. So we are sitting on some funds at, uh, that go back wow. to the 1960s. Oh, okay. And, you know, I, I remember the city has questioned us saying, well, what are these for? And we still have that information. Yeah. We can go back and say, this is from this, this, these two people who left us yeah. this dollar amount. Interesting. So. We have to keep good records. We're a government agency. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's, uh, I think, one of the, again, kind of the benefits of partnering with us as well is, you know, um, as staff transitions, as board transitions over time, um, you know, we're kind of uh, a great bastion of that, you know, that history and that knowledge as well. I have a question that maybe doesn't, we can't, you know, you brought up other funds. Can, with permission from those families, can those funds that we're just investing in CDs and things be put into yes. absolute that? Yeah. Because it's, so now you're looking at a big chunk of the money already there. Right. So that was one of the things that I know Deb and I talked about, is, and, and Joseph and I talked about it as well, is I'd, we could potentially use that as a seed money to say, say a matching donations. Mm -hmm. We'll match up to 43,000, I don't remember, what, 43,370? Um, and which means all we have to do is raise a little under 60,000. So that and the might be. The library is very well liked. People yeah. do okay. give us stuff. If that's, you know, that's, I think, that's, I think we can get away with, you know, actually, because if we can do that, that would be a huge help. And you can, because that was not taxpayer money. Yeah, it's not taxpayer it money. Right. So that would help us raise the money to get to our 100000 so the, o the only thing is we have to wait till the end of the year because we've got, well, I guess we can take it and we can take a, a hit on the interest, yeah. but mm -hmm. yeah. The CDs are, were okay, but we took them out two months ago. Now they're even better. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. Like yeah. That. So if you take a penalty. It isn't, isn't a big penalty for us if we take a penalty. So if we, if we move forward with something like this, we'd have that seed money and maybe we could do it quickly or sooner than the end of the year, or I don't know, if, if, that's the, if that's the desire of the library board, but it's not on my agenda to make a decision today. 
Yeah, um, I mean, um, as far as like next steps, you know, uh, it sounds like obviously we have some time here. Um, would it sound, it would, would um, I guess, would end of year kind of be your goal for, for opening or kind of finalizing a plan? Um, obviously, you, if you even want to open the fund, I should add as well. Don't want to presume. But. Well, if, if, we can, if we can do it, and um, I think we, we'll need a little bit of time to raise the additional funds. Yeah, yeah. So I would hope by the end of the year we would be in that situation where we can do that, if not sooner. Yeah, yeah. You know, if magic happens yeah. Um, yeah. And, and the board agrees that this is something we should do because they haven't said anything yet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, then maybe we can move a little bit faster. But uh, I, I could reasonably think that we can get this accomplished by the end of the year. Going back to the what CDs we have, and some of them are specific to certain things. And can that be set up through the foundation? That I would say it wouldn't be set up through the foundation. We would still maintain probably a spreadsheet saying uh, a percentage of the, the percentage would go out would have to go materials and stuff. <coughs> okay, I would think that would be more for us to deal with. Okay, <coughs> just so that those families who donated that money would say it does need the money for this. So if we're getting this four point whatever percent quarterly. And we take one percent of that to go to meet those families' requirements. Okay. That's our job. That's yours. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Brett? No, I'm good. Tim? Yeah. I'm good. You're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Um, if anything else does pop up, you know, please feel free to give me a call. Um, we okay. do have. Uh, um, you know, I've got the contact. Yeah, Steve's, oh, Steve's got it. Perfect. Um, we do have a uh, second quarter investor briefing coming up. I'm blanking on the exact date, but I'd be happy to kind of say it's a Zoom link. Um, oh, cool. So I'll be happy to share that as well if you're interested sure. in kind of getting more details there. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Very much. I appreciate you. Have a good day. Yep. I will play German songs. Okay. Okay, if I sneak out now. Yes, ma'am. And again, I vote for the roof thing. Yes. Oh, it's where we're pulling money from. Oh. Yeah. Which account? We already voted to approve the roof, yeah. but now yeah. it's just which fund okay. comes out. So. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> any discussion on what our speakers have said? Is there anything anybody wants to talk about now that they've departed? Uh, me, I'm yeah. you, dumb, I'm like dumb. Yeah? I'm gonna say it to you. So, we're gonna give them uh, so the right to, as a foundation, take money in. But let's say somebody gets 100 bucks. They get picked a hundred bucks, but we only get a hundred bucks, fifty dollars of it, and that's kind of what they're doing. No. So, so they're. What is, what is, their, what is their, their role here? So they. The, yeah, they they'll take the donations and invest it with their funds. Okay. And with that. Um, a portion of the earnings each year will be distributed to the library if we so choose to take that distribution. So they'll hold that fund, the total fund, whatever that value is, as it gains in the stock market, they'll, gotcha. they'll hold that or they'll distribute up to, this last one was 4.75%. Um, a lot of foundations in the past, when things were going well, were 6 to 8%. Um, but I imagine that 4.75 is to to take care of this little blow that they had. But we can also take all that money back from the foundation if we have a need for that, whatever anybody gives. So 100% minus their, their fee, which is 1%, so $1,000 on the first million. If I calculate that properly, is that right? How much? Or is it $10,000? $10,000. $10,000 on the first million. $1,000 on the first 100,000 mm -hmm. is what I was thinking. So, um, one of the things though, Jay, is if we have a donor who comes to us and says, um, I'm 72 years old, I need to pull out a required minimum distribution, I would like to automatically direct that to you, whether it is in stock or right. cash, this fund would then take it in and deposit that. 
Correct. Yeah, I picked it. And so, is it an option that maybe the flatbird create their own foundation? So every dollar that comes in, especially those who, you know, I, you know, I want to basically make much of my dollars go into the library, nobody else. My donation goes to the library, nobody else. Is there an option to create a foundation for the library? Yes, Stephen, we've talked a about, recording. we have talked about that, setting up a foundation, the friends, you'd have the friends, and then you'd have a foundation. That's how um, Mead, in Sheboygan, Mead has a foundation when Mead passed away, he donated millions of dollars and they put that in a foundation and the library <clears throat> runs, some of the library runs off of that uh, interest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are options to think about. So uh, I'll just run through the, the pros and cons quick that I know of. So if you set up your own foundation, you set up your own 501c3 again like we did with the Friends of the Library and then you have to have a board that meets oversee at least that. once a year to oversee that and you're going to have to work with a financial advisor to manage the fund on top of that so and file uh, income tax file income tax this this method they don't get to give our money to anybody else they it still all has to go to the library it's it all it's all held in, in trust for the li it, it's all the library money so it does, they just invested in the pool that they're investing in whichever pool or pools I think that we select um, we get to drive them towards to some degree but yeah and it would they're doing, they're doing the dirty work but yeah you might not get all the money from it so they might get fifty bucks but you get twenty dollars of it fifty bucks. No, we'll get, we'll, get we'll get all of it. The, they're doing the dirty work and then the, the 1%. So on our $100,000 in that year, they're only going to take $1,000 of our $100,000. And so they're going to be managing the money, putting it in accounts that hopefully will generate four point, at least 4.7%, which would be $4,700. Yeah. And if we want that $99,000 back after the first year, we can ask for it. They might take a little bit more, but uh, it, it's still our money. So they're not, they're not taking a large percentage of our fund. They don't, they don't pocket anything off of this other than that 1% or less. So if our, 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 our fund goes up to a million dollars, it's, was it 0.6%? And then eight percent or eight percent, and then two million is eight percent. So even at that point, they only take a small portion of that fund, and that's savings. In and we have to. I know that this has been a sticking point for other libraries, but yeah, um, finding people to sit on a foundation board is something that's hard to do. It's it's a lot of time. To, to do that, finding people to come to be on a Friends of the Library board is, is also takes some time. So it's worth $1,000 to me, it, just that alone. Um, I actually, if we are going to go down this path where we really are looking at this, um, he mentioned several other organizations here that have gone into the West Bend Fund, Lac Loren, the parks. <coughs> and Washington County um, Campus Foundation. I know the president, and I'm sure she would be willing to come and talk to us sure. if we have more, if we want to see how they yeah. feel this is, is going forward and, and how they're doing. I would suggest to find out what, what their experiences were with um, this um, you know, foundation. I actually work on a foundation, a board on a foundation, education foundation, so that's my thing. Caution, sure. uh, it's more, find out what the people in that area were doing, their successes, their experiences, mm -hmm. before you go in, just make sure that everything's okay. That's my point. Yeah, and, and we really aren't going to make a decision. This is just the idea that was brought in because yeah. of the money. So it may be, it probably will end up on 
several agendas in the future. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I say benchmark, talk to the other libraries, see what they're doing. See what yeah. What, is they good or not bad? You know, those old type things. Right, right. Whether they, they do that. Okay. If nothing else, we will move on to the library director's report. Uh, I sent it out to you, and uh, I, the one thing I didn't add is a little report from Brad. Oh. Um, Brad did a review of our digital circulation over our print circulation over the years. So since 2012, uh, is when we started with overdrive and we're only looking at the overdrive circulation right now but what you see is that our print circulation stayed pretty stable over those years and um, our digital circulation grew but not at an astounding rate and uh, I don't know if Brad wants to say anything about it but uh, it's we and we've leveled off a little bit on our digital circulation the one thing I'm going to say is that if you take the total circulations, print and e-content, electronic, the electronic represents, is it 20 or 25 percent of the total? We are still in the business of print circulation. That, that this idea that electronic media is going to t overtake print media so rapidly is not really bearing out based on the data that I've been seeing. So at least in the short term, can't speak for the long term, but in the short term, uh, we are still in the print business. And I think that goes a long way to saying that we as a brick and mortar institution in that regard bears that out. So that's, that's all I really wanted to add to the report. Um, if there's any questions, I can answer them. No, um, I just wanted to compliment the staff on um, their focus. You know, I, I know weeding is becoming the word of the day. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, uh, yeah fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy seems to be doing very well in her new role. Yes. Okay, I, I, and, and that's good. And um, which one was it? Uh, was it not Vanessa? Vanessa seems to be filling Emily's position pretty well too and expanding and getting a lot of people more involved in things. Yep. Staff wise, I like that. Terica, well, Terica is Terica. She's she's <laughs> fabulous on what she does. Um, I, I can see we are increasing programs also. It looks like based on this we're starting to increase programs and I like the idea now that we're trying to get more youth back in yeah with the books well we are um, seeing even though I keep telling them to hold back they keep adding more programs um, which is good and I, we just uh, we're becoming more flexible too so even this Friday there was a potential clo uh, cancellation for our coffee Fridays but another staff member popped up and said, I can do something for that. And we're going to have a program on Coffee Friday with the uh, trivia, world leader trivia. Oh, um, nice. Rerun. So, okay. yeah, it'll be fun. One of the things I want to just bring up is I've been working with uh, at least three of the four so far uh, of these department heads. And what we are doing is we are essentially laying out the department and looking at the high level, what are the sub pieces of their department now? In Nancy's case, she's taken on new roles other than just outreach, so it's expanded her area. And by doing that, I've worked with uh, all three of, the, three of them so far, and we are having a series of meetings and we're trying to focus on what is this gonna look like? Sort of a schematic, a framework, a blueprint, so that they can decide what are the top priority things, and you know we can switch things around and uh, then I take it to Steve and say Steve this is what we're going to do and Steve says of course you are <laughs> <laughs> that's usually about right that is about right <laughs> and I did see pictures of the luncheon for the volunteers that was very yeah, nice was good. looked like they enjoyed it we have another one planned for the fall and then to touch on the weeding uh, 
No, one of the one of the first things that the architect said when I said, well, let's talk about first step series, he said, well, what do you have for, do you know what your collection size is supposed to be? And so we're, we're working through that in each of our collections. Everybody is participating in looking at what are the criteria we should have for each section, so all the leadership team and potentially their people that work for them are, are weighing in on each point in the collection. We'll find an area where we find things are, are good. We'll see how that stabilizes over the um, next year or two, and then we'll look at it again and see if we need to make some changes again to shift that, that collection in another direction. So um, things will look interesting by the end of the week or beginning of next week as far as the upstairs goes. I'm, I'm getting some volunteers that are gonna help me shift some materials around, and then we'll be uh, you shifting bookcases too? We, we probably will be shifting some bookcases keep as well. Keep in mind when you move those bookcases, you're not going to have carpeting under it. Correct. So, so we'll have bare spots. Yeah. We have, the boys will come in and do some carpeting if, if we have enough carpeting and we're going to look at ordering more carpeting if we, okay. if we need it. So. Yeah. We've done it before. We've built it before. Yeah, I, I know. Out, so. yeah. If you're doing a lot of moving though, I didn't know if we have it that much. Surplus. Yeah. Oh, so. and I, I would like you to give us just one update. I know it's you had about the roof. Oh, which which update did I want to give you? Well, just the fact that you said they're going to be looking at it probably be starting the end of the month. Yeah, they'll be starting at the end of the month. Um, there's a lot to talk about with the roof, and I should have put more of it in here. But we are closing the the parking lot area where the book drop is. We're putting a book drop out front. Uh, that's the plan as it stands, and. Um, they will, by the end of the month, they'll be putting materials up on the roof and tearing off and doing all the fun things. They said they'll, it won't be long to do all the small peaked areas and then they'll be doing the large area around the, the second floor. The flat area? Um, no, there's still the peaked areas the and peaked then they'll area. do the flat area last. Okay. The tower they're going to do on the weekends when there's nobody here so that they don't have to um, deal well, with people coming and going because the, there is a but they'll, they will lift the materials down from the top but uh, there is still a chance of something falling so we want to make sure that everyone's safe. Um, Except the board members might have a board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> We will we'll have another door to come through yeah. for, for <coughs> nothing. And we're moving forward. You're comfortable. The city voted unanimously. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Brett. Yeah. For doing your part. Higher ground is the uh, the roofer that they we selected, and they have been doing a lot of the cleanup from the past years anyway, so they know what areas need to be addressed. Higher ground. That's the one that they were going to contract for the roof for the walkway too. I think. Yes. I yeah, think so. I, I don't that. know if that was approved, but that was yeah. You know, it was, was approved. Was that approved yesterday? It yeah, it was higher ground. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any good. questions for the director? If not, um, yes. One oh. thing: Patrons Park. Uh, you show a fifteen thousand dollar potential <coughs> potential expenditure. Yeah. It would that would come from the restricted accounts from Patrons, Patrons Park. Park. Patrons Park yeah. There's money in there for that. Mm -hmm. I think we have money in there for yeah. that. We got twenty nine yeah. nine. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So and issues with the HVAC. You, you've been working with uh, city maintenance as far as city maintenance did the uh, pump replacement. So, um, but it'll still come out of our budget, the yeah. two thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, that's the deal, I guess. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay, I was just wanted to make sure that the city was holding up their side yep. as far as helping out. Yep, um, okay. the, the, the city's maintenance staff is what we get. Um, we pay for them too, but right. um, but they came in and, and off hours and, and did their motor swap okay. and ordered the new motor, so they're the ones that are, are we'll get the bill from them for the $2,000 sure. for the new motor. So. Yeah, but you don't have to go out and find somebody on the economy then to do it. Then right, I don't have to well, install it myself. On call. Right. <laughs> They're on so. call. Our problems always uh, happen after hours. Yeah, always. always. But they're good people. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good. Okay. Right. If nothing else, um, library board president's report. 
I have nothing to report. And the next one, agenda item number seven, um, it says for consideration, but actually what we have to do is our portion, the roof um, was like 429,000, correct? Our portion, um, our portion is 179 or something? Uh, from what I understand, if the if all the money is used, we'd have a 172,840 would be our portion. Okay. So we have 107,000, uh, $374 in our capital. So that is going to be the bulk of it. What we need to do tonight is make the determination where the additional, what is that, about 60, 60 some thousand will come out of. And it would either come out of our emergency fund or pretty much it's the emergency because I don't think it would be the strategic plan. We want to keep that. Yeah, I think we want to keep that. So that, um, that would be my recommendation is take the remainder out of the emergency, emergency fund. Emergency fund. Keep in mind, if you go back and you look at the financial re report in our fund balance, we currently have a negative balance of 47,847 in our operating fund. When we move the 10,000 from the fund 126, <clears throat> we have a negative 37,000. That 37,000 will be replaced from the carryover that comes from this year, and that 37,000 yeah. is what we um, were accidentally, the city accidentally took an additional 30 some thousand for the sprinkler system. So we're gonna replace that in the fund balance. Then based on that, then we'll see how much money has left over from the 2022 budget. And after the, yeah, after the audit. After the, the total, audit. Well, and, it, and it's, my calculations had a pretty sizable amount. So it was pretty hefty carryover. Well, we can make some determinations on, on you know, like, uh, I'm sure we're going to have emergency things coming up again. <clears throat> Unfortunately, so, <laughs> Jim, um, building gets what older. What is the dollar amount? I have to calculate it. I'm not that guy. Uh, can't do it in I the head. Had, I think it, at 40. Oh wait a minute. Let me do my calculations. Is, um, our portion was 172 late 40. I, I think we would just want to save the remainder from the operating funds or the emergency fund because the total project. Uh, was 476.80. That includes the repairs that may may or may not happen. Um, that was just an estimated cost of an extra extra 45,000, I believe, for um, insulation repairs. So I I would just say the remainder of whatever our portion is up well, to. Well, it's 65,466 dollars. But uh, Steve, your dollar amount includes the contingency fund, is what yeah. I'm hearing you say. So yeah. it theoretically could be less right. based upon that contingency fund. We could say up to whatever that number is from the emergency fund if you want to. Um, but it could be less. So I would make a motion to approve 65000 The funding for the roof project. Um, from the capital budget with the remainder coming from the emergency fund. That makes sense to me. Okay. We don't have to do specific dollars? I don't think so. Not in this, because we don't have a specific bill yet. Okay. Okay. If Carrie wants that later on, we can make that clear. Okay. I only want to make it known from the city that if bills do come in, she knows where to pull money from. You know, and he yeah. has that. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Real quick, just want to make sure what the, is a motion made to approve funding from the capital budget or capital fund? Capital, capital offset, offset. Capital offset, offset fund. 107,374. Yeah, 107,374. And the remaining. With the remainder coming from the emergency fund. Yes. Correct? Got it. Right. Okay, just making sure. Should we <coughs> say up to and not exceed, or is that. You didn't say that. I can't no, I don't the project. The project's yeah. approved at whatever oh, dollars that's true. the city, so. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that it comes in under and we, we save a couple of bucks. Yeah, I'm assuming there's a, something in play that the city has there's approved. A, there's a contingency. 
yeah, worked into it 10 percent or something. Like well, that. I shouldn't say it comes in under. It won't come in under. We know that, but we, that contingency fund might be less. We don't have to use the contingency. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. I'll second his motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Good. Um, next regular meeting is going to be April 18th at 5.15. Same time, same place. I don't think we have any real assigned tasks. No, Jesse's not here, so, so she <laughs> can't assign it. <laughs> <laughs> we lucked out. Okay. I'll have a strategic plan update at that meeting. Okay. So that, that's my own assigned task. All right. With that, we are adjourned.